What's up guys, we are back at it with the deal of the week featuring a four unit in Durham, North Carolina. And I know I call this deal of the week and it's most likely the deal of when I feel like doing one of these, but deal of the week sounds a lot better. So let's hop right in. We have this four unit that is located at 1303 Drew Street, not Dew Street, Although Mountain Dew, no, I definitely don't want Mountain Dew. That ain't the best thing. So this property, I've looked through it already a little bit, is a property that has had a little bit of renovations done to it. And I'm not sure if every unit looks like this one, but it looks like they maybe have a couple of units like this. So just scrolling through pretty quickly, looks like they've done a decent amount of the value add, but some of the numbers look pretty good. But as far as overall specs, we have almost 3,100 square feet, $750,000 purchase price, and it, ha it was built in 1984, so I don't need to have to worry about lead paint. That's pretty good, potentially asbestos though. Um, but again, it looks like they've done a lot of work. And as far as other properties that are on the market right now in this area, this one's actually fairly reasonably priced. Right now we can go ahead and look at a little bit of the facts about this property and what some of the units are renting for. So you can see in the description here, we all have two bed, one bath and the units are all rented at 1500 except for one, which is 1250. And one of the units right now is vacant, which is the one that they are showing most likely in all of those photos. Again, I'd wanna be able to see what the other units look like, but of course we know what uh, the value add that we need to do is this couple of pictures here. We don't really need to reinvent the wheel if the other units don't look like that. We can just mimic this exact unit and get that $1,500 in rent. So this one's definitely very simple to look at, probably will have very minimal repairs right away. Uh, potentially there's going to be some in that unit that's 1250, but I'd say this unit renovation right here, if you were hiring someone else out to do it with paint, flooring, looks like they probably did new kitchen, countertop, could run you 15, 20 grand, depends on a bunch of factors, but let's just say 20 to be safer. If you're doing a lot of this yourself, obviously it'd be significantly cheaper. And if you're someone who is gonna go in there, live in one unit, maybe you're cool about doing that for a little bit and getting some of those renovations done yourself so you can save some money. So normally I use Rentometer to go over and check and see if these rents seem accurate, but I feel pretty good about these rents, plus that's what they're actually receiving. I can go on the MLS and confirm that that's correct. Uh, but feel confident about those actual numbers. So let's just go ahead, jump into the cash flow analysis tool and see what some of these numbers look like for if we were going to house hack the property. And I'm gonna go with a 5% conventional down payment because right now if you're house hacking with 5% down, they completely got rid of that self-sufficiency test or it's just not talked about which is something that is an issue with FHA and today's high interest rates and pricing. So that FHA self-sufficiency test is just to say, so let's say every single one of these units rented for $1,000, you'd have $4,000 total. 75% of those gross rents have to be greater than or equal to the mortgage. So in this case, if your mortgage was $3,000 or less, you would pass that self-sufficiency test. But with this new 5% conventional down payment for an owner-occupied buyer, then the self-sufficiency test doesn't matter. So if the mortgage ended up being 3,500, you could still qualify for the property. All right, so let's throw in our assumptions here. We have 750,000 and the closing costs will probably be about there. Just throwing some random stuff. It's possible a few of the units aren't gonna be as nice, but given that three of them are 1,500, or two of them are 1,500, and that vacant one would also go for 1,500, I'm just gonna say 25,000. Um, again, you don't have to do this all right away. The numbers will just be a little different. You could still rent out the one unit as it is. And if you're going to get in as a house hack, just save up some money over time. So we're gonna stay with that house hack. We have 5% down and our interest rate is going to be 8%. Uh, might be my, more like 7.75 right now if you're going to do that type of loan and you are an owner occupied buyer. So if we're an owner occupied buyer, we're saying 1500 for two of the units. Um, preferably we live in the not as nice one, but it seems like the nicest one is the one that's vacant. So this is going to be our rental income today. Uh, so here are some of the numbers. We are going to have a $5,700 payment, which is pretty big payment, of course. Um, that's going to be added along because we have our PMI and we also have insurance and taxes. Now remember, anytime you purchase a property and every single year that you own a property, those property taxes can increase. 
Uh, it doesn't usually happen right away. It usually can take a couple of years because the city just does things slowly. And I want to say that for insurance, we'll probably be closer to 150 on this one. Property taxes are around 2000 on that property total. Um, so about 200 a month seems fair. And then we're going to put in for a cap X about 50 bucks a month. And that's just saving for things like roof, hot water heater, etc. So while you live in this property, you could generate 4,300, 4,250 of income and you have a 5750 payment. So that essentially means that you're paying market rent in order for you to live in your own unit, which really isn't that bad from today's perspective with these high interest rates and this 1250 can get a little bit higher. So eventually if you increase that, you'd be paying another $250 less towards living in that property. So that's pretty good. And once we move out, we can now rent it out for a total of 1500 on each and get $6,000 total. Again, some things are going to increase. We don't know what utilities are being paid. Uh, so I just throw in 120 there for the water. Um, definitely seems to vibe with what other properties I have and how much the water bill usually is each month. So right now you can see we are actually marginally cash flow negative on the property. So deal of the week, not the most amazing deal of the week, but something that theoretically you lived in it for a few years. Maybe these rents increase because Raleigh Durham's an area where pricing and rents have just gone up. And typically when prices go up, rents will follow more slowly. And then theoretically, maybe a few years down the road, we can get a 6% interest rate. Don't bank on it, but it's possible. And things start to look a little bit better over a couple of years. This is now renting for 1600 each and things are going to just look a lot nicer on your property. Again, those property taxes might go up. Let's just call it 300 a month, but things are going to start looking better. And all of a sudden you have a pretty decent rental property if you wait long enough and believe in that area. I personally do believe in this area, so that's why I think it is a pretty decent deal of the week. Alternatively, if you just wanted to buy this with a conventional investment loan and you're putting 25% down, things will look a lot better from a cash flow perspective right off the bat, but obviously you're putting a lot more money down. Your interest rate will probably be closer to, let's just call it 8.5%, and we're gonna be 1,500. Maybe we just get that one 1250 tenant out of there right away increase that unit's rent and appeal and overall value. And then we have, start with what we had lower. And we also would not have any private mortgage insurance in this case. So right away you have a pretty decent cash flowing rental, almost $1,000 a month that it gets you, plus obviously the principal pay down, tax benefits, and this one is fairly turnkey, so you don't have to do too much in order for it to get to that spot. And for today's rates, a 5.3% cash on cash return isn't awful. A lot of places that I'm looking at in the Durham area have basically negative cash on cash return. So if you can get something like this, that in my books seems like not a bad deal. Now, as far as location in the Durham area, you're pretty close to downtown Durham, which has seen a lot of growth. There are a lot of areas in Durham with certain pockets that may or may not be as good as others. I would call this an area where you may get um, not the best tenants in the world. You're not gonna get those Duke students or young professionals who are working in RTP. Possibly, but it's a little bit more transitioning. Um, so this area is changing a lot where you might have a really rundown home next to a beautiful home like this one, brand new build, rundown, rundown, beautiful build. So there's a lot of that going on, but as far as progress over the years, that's definitely an area where you would see some progress in my opinion. But of course, do your own research, make sure you drive around neighborhoods. Anytime that you wanna learn more about a location, physically being there helps the most, but if you can't physically be there and you're doing this at a distance, two awesome places that I always recommend. Download the Ring app, put yourself in the area, and then people are always commenting, hey, did you hear the gunshots? Uh, my property got um, burgled or someone broke into my car. And then you can see where in the area that those things happened. Or you can use a simple uh, website like Spot Crime. Just go over to Spot Crime, type in the address, and then it'll show you what has happened around there. It'll give you things like assault, battery, uh, theft, and you can just see where a lot of that crime potentially happens and then make an educated decision for yourself how you feel about that area. 
All right, so that is deal of the week with our four unit here in Durham, North Carolina. I am your favorite real estate agent, I hope, in the Raleigh-Durham Triangle area. I can help you buy, sell, or invest just like I do myself. And I'm someone who has a lot of knowledge because I invested in real estate for multiple years before I was able to do a lot of this stuff. So if you're interested in working with me, definitely hit me up with a comment or I have a Google form that you can fill out with your information and someone from either myself or my team can give you a call and we can figure out how to work together. And if you guys want to check out the cash flow analysis tool, I will also link that below. And if you guys did like that video, I'd appreciate it if you would scroll down and make that thumbs up button blue. It would make me very, very happy. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like this and learning about real estate investing, as well as the agent business, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, more wealth is coming your way.